Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is still doing well. Welcome to tonight's bonus. Before we get into it, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support this channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost you a cent. Click that like button. It takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things, they really do help this channel to continue to grow and go. And they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into tonight's bonus, shall we? All right, so... We're all aware of Dumbs and the Battle of Dulce and all of the secrets hidden there. All of the strange connections, um, whether it be super soldier programs, uh, alien life forms, etc. This is a forgotten interview by Thomas Edwin Costello approximately a year before he died or disappeared. We don't really know what happened to him. He was the Dulce Base Security Officer. Question. When exactly was the upper human occupied level of the Archuleta installation constructed? Answer. I heard Dulce was started in 1937-38 to 38 by Army engineers Enlarged over the years, most recent work was completed in 65 to 66 to connect tunnels to Page, Arizona base, site of one of the older underground facilities. The Four Corner base is called Parica. Most of the Native Americans living in the area were aware of that base and could tell us about the underground life forms that frequently are spotted near those communities, Bigfoot, etc. Question. By what means was the upper installations constructed? Are you familiar with the alleged developments made by the Rand Corporation of a highly efficient bore or mole machine capable of melting rock using nuclear-powered Wolfram graphite-tipped drill cones? Answer. According to several senior maintenance workers, part of it was blasted by nuclear devices in the 60s. There are sections like the shuttle tunnels that were formed by an advanced tunneling machine that leaves the tunnel walls smooth. The finished walls of those tubes resembled polished black glass. Really quick, uh, I find it interesting that the Q&A between the questioner and Mr. Castello uh, within the first two questions, cryptids are brought up. Bigfoot and etc., meaning other humanoid uh, cryptids. And this is not a Q&A about cryptids. This is about Dulce. And he clearly states that the Native Americans were well aware of Bigfoot and other humanoid cryptids using these caverns uh, as possible homes or whatnot. I find it just very interesting that something that doesn't have anything to do with cryptids, boom, it's there. So there's one connection. There's going to be many more throughout this. Question, by whom was Dulce installation originally constructed? Answer, nature started the caverns, the Draco, reptilian humanoids, used the caverns and tunnels for centuries. Later, the Rand Corporation plans 
It was enlarged repeatedly. The original caverns included ice caves and sulfur springs that the aliens found perfect for their needs. The Dulce Caverns rival Carlsbad Caverns in size, which Carlsbad Caverns are the largest and deepest in the world. And some of the Carlsbad has yet to be explored still. Question. What exactly are the cattle and human organs, such as blood, anal tissue, eyes, reproductive organs, tongues, etc., used for the organs obtained via cattle and human mutilations? Answered. Read the so-called Dulce papers. Question. Are the various electromagnetic controlled air or spacecraft that have been seen leaving from and arriving at Mount Archuleta manned by humans, the alien entities, or both? Answer. Archuleta Mesa is a minor area. The craft leave and are stored in five areas. One is southeast of Dulce, one near Durango, Colorado, one at Taos, New Mexico, and the main fleet is stored at Los Alamos. Question. Others have suggested that some of the entities below Dulce are not of extraterrestrial origin and that they are actually descended from saurian or reptoid beings such as the Velociraptor or Stenochosaurus equalus, a serpentine race or races similar to that hinted at in the third chapter of the book of Genesis. Answer, yes, some reptoids are native to this planet. The ruling caste of aliens are reptilian. The beige or white beings are called Draco. The other reptilian beings are green and some are brown. They were an ancient race on earth living underground. It may have been one of the draconian beings that tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden. Reptoids rightly consider themselves native Tarians. Perhaps they are the ones we call the fallen angels. Maybe not. Either way, we are considered the squatters on earth. Question. Some have suggested that the so-called underground ET bases and tunnels may, for a large part, be literally thousands of years old constructions of a anti-Diluvian race which attained to a considerable level of scientific complexity and who were destroyed by a divinely catechism which took place after they attempted to merge their science with occult supernatural forces. For instance, some have suggested that the Bermuda Triangle phenomena may be a result of the out-of-control Atlantean experiment that led to a space-time disaster which produced an electromagnetic fallout in the Triangle area and elsewhere after they had accidentally lost power forces and energies into the world that they knew very little about. Do your observations tend to confirm or refute such a possibility? Answer, I'm not sure about the divine part, but these aliens consider themselves native Terrans. Question, where do the little gray aliens fit in? Answer, they work for and are controlled by Draco. There are other gray-skinned beings that are not in league with the Draco. Question, did you ever talk to any of the aliens at the base? Answer, since I was the senior security technician at the base, I had to communicate with them on a daily basis. If there were any problems that involved security or video cameras, I was the one they called. It was the reptilian working cast that usually did the physical labor in the lower levels of Dulce. Decisions involving that cast were usually made by the white Draco. When human workers caused problems for the working cast, the reptoids went to the white draconian boss and the Draco called me. At times, it felt like it was 
a never-ending problem, several human workers resented the no-nonsense or get-back-to-work attitude the working caste lived by. When needed, intervention became a vital tool. The biggest problem were human workers who foolishly wandered around near the off-limits areas of the alien section. I guess it's human nature to be curious and to wonder what is past the barriers. Too often, someone found a way to bypass the barriers and nosed around. The cameras near the entrance usually stopped them before they got themselves into serious trouble. A few times, I had to formally request the return of a human worker. Question. Are there other sites tied into the shuttle network other than those which had been mentioned? And if so, where are their entrances? Answer. Where? Everywhere. They crisscross the world as an endless subterranean highway, like a freeway, except this one is underground. A subterranean highway in America is like a freeway, except it's underground. That highway depends on electric motors for trucks, cars, buses, for the paved roads, and it is for limited travel. There is another style of transit for freight and for passengers, that is for rapid travel. That worldwide network is called the Subglobal System. It has checkpoints at each country entry. There are shuttle tubes that shoot the trains at incredible speeds using a maglev and vacuum method. They travel at the speed that excels the speed of sound. Part of your question involves the location of entrances to the bases. The easiest way to answer is to say every state in the United States has them. Frequently, the entrances are camouflaged as sand quarries or mining operations. Other complex portals are found on military bases. New Mexico and Arizona have the largest amounts of entrances, followed by California, Montana, Idaho, Colorado, Pennsylvania, Kansas, Arkansas, and Missouri. Of all of the states, Florida and North Dakota have the least of entrances. Wyoming has a road that opens directly onto a subterranean freeway. That road is no longer in use, but could be reactivated if they decide to do so with minimal cost. It's located near Brooks Lake. Question, are there any bases in the state of Utah? Have you heard anything about the alleged underground installation within the Wasatch Mountains? Answer, Salt Lake, Lake Powell area, Dark Canyon, Dugway Grounds, Modena, Vernal, all have exits there, others too. Question, does the Mount Archuleta shuttle system connect with a shuttle system which allegedly radiates from Mount Shasta in Northern California? Answer, yes, Mount Shasta is a major site of alien elder race, reptilian race, human meetings. Beginning Cleveland Grover, every president in the United States history had visited Tele City. Truman was supposed to have visited the lower realms as a high archon on earth. He was supposed to have met the king of the world there and gave him the keys to the United States. Question. Did you notice any involvement of high-level Freemasons, Rosicrucians, or Jesuits within the underground installation and or with the aliens? Answer, yeah, I did, but that's a loaded question, and I won't comment further. I'm not a Mason or a member of any other secret fraternal group. There is one organization I am a member of. That group is commonly called the Central Unit. It is a pleasure to tell you that I am a member of the Sub-Galactic League of Costa Rica. Question, is there any truth to the allegations that the CIA slash aliens have established bases on the moon and also Mars? Answer, I've heard that too, but I have not seen proof with my own eyes. The aliens do allegedly have bases on several moons of Jupiter and Saturn. The CIA operate in other countries, but I have never heard them operating on other planets. Question, have you heard any hints or rumors suggesting that there may be lower levels beneath Ultra 7 level of the Dulce base? And also, 
where these may lead to, and what they may consist of. Answer, yes, your guess is as good as mine. Sure, there was lots of talk, but that does not mean it's there. However, I will tell you I saw elevators that were off limits unless you had a umbra or higher security clearance. At the base, information is supplied to me as a need-to-know basis only. My clearance was Ultra 7. Question. Some insist that the United States secret government has developed its own disk craft based largely upon top-secret anti-gravity experiments carried out by Nazi Germany scientists during World War II. Have you heard anything referring to this? Answer. When I was working in photo security, heard a lot of talk, never saw any proof, but once in the Air Force, I developed a roll of film that showed a craft like Adamski's with a swastika on the side. Question, Tom, did you have access to alien craft? Were you ever inside of them? Answer, Yes, I frequently saw them in the garages. There are quite a few of them. The main fleet is stored under Los Alamos. Yes, I entered several class crafts. There were two things that stick in my mind. An odd, spongy feeling to the floors. And an unusual pinkish-purple color of the lighting. The crew stated the floor becomes rigid in flight and the purple tint of the lighting changes to a bright blue-white. The entire inside of the aircraft are scaled down in size when compared to the average human. The halls are curved and narrow, but somehow, when inside it appears bigger than it looks. Certain areas, the outermost sections, almost felt and looked alive. I was never taken up in one. Question. Can you give me more information on the reptilian race? What do they do on the sixth level, the area called Nightmare Hall? Answer. The worker cast does the daily chores, mopping the latex floors, cleaning the cages, bringing food to the hungry people and other species. It's their job to formulate the proper mixture for the Type 1 and Type 2 beings that the Draco race had created. The working cast work at the labs as well as at the computer banks. Basically speaking, the reptilian races are active at all levels of the Dulce base. There are several different races of aliens that work on the east section of Level 6. That section is commonly called the alien section. The Draco are the undisputed masters of five, six, seven levels. The humans are second in command of those levels. I had to argue with one of the large draconian boss frequently. His name is difficult to verbalize. It is pronounced with a throaty ka sha fa I usually called him Kosh, and he hated it. The draconian leaders are very formal when talking to the human race. These ancient beings consider us a lower race. Kosh called me Leader Costello, but it was used in a sarcastical way. However, the worker caste is friendly enough as long as you allow them to speak first. They will answer you if you address them. They are very cautious beings and consider most humans to be hostile. They always seem surprised when they find many of the humans were open and trustworthy. There is no frat fraternizing with the aliens off hours. It is forbidden to speak to any alien race in the halls or any of the elevators. Without a clear business-oriented reason, humans can talk to humans and aliens can speak to aliens, but that's as far as it goes. At the work site, however, it's different. There is free speech in the labs. The camaraderie found in the labs also reaches the computer bank sections. In those areas, everyone talks to everyone. However, everything changes the minute you cross the threshold of the hall. Instantly, all conversations become strictly formal. Hard as it was, several times I had to arrest someone simply because they spoke to an alien. It's a strange place. 
Question, exactly what made you aware that something was wrong at Dulce? Seems to me that a place as obviously horrible as this one wouldn't need an Einstein to know that this is a crime site. What took you so long? Are you the guy who blew the whistle? Answer, there are several things you should know about. I took an oath under the penalty of death that no matter what I saw or heard, I would never divulge that information. Also, I signed a waiver that states I would willingly give up my life if I was found guilty of treason. At the Dulce base, treason is anything that mentions the details of daily operations at this facility when outside of the confinement of the base. When I first arrived, a need-to-know policy was in effect. The story the honchos told us was that this is a tri-biotransfer facility with advanced technology doing advanced adventurous methodology for medical and mental gains, which is a fancy way of saying they do really risky things with human life just to see what would happen. If a medical cure happens, it will be heralded on the surface of the earth as a marvelous new cure, saying it was found after years of research at some well-known medical lab. The real story of the cure is never explained. After all, the Dulce base is a secret facility. These people are very good at what they do. They do not tell the truth about the unfortunate people who end up in Nightmare Hall. I worked with aliens with that in mind. You should get the idea of the secrecy and security at that place. Yes, I know this is not the usual hospital type job, but in the beginning I bought the whole package. I was reminded daily by intercom in the elevators that this site does high risk advanced medical and drug testing to cure insanity. Please never speak to the inmates. It can destroy years of work. I'm sensible when doctors say don't speak to them. Who was I to destroy the delicate situation? But one man somehow caught my eye. He repeatedly stated he was George Redacted and that he had been kidnapped and was sure someone was searching for him. I don't know why he stuck in my mind. I found I was remembering his face thinking he sure didn't look or sound insane. But many inmates said that. The next weekend, I convinced a friend of mine, a cop, to run a check on the guy saying that I had a run-in with him and was curious. I didn't mention the base at all. It was a sickening feeling when the computer confirmed that George Redacted was missing. What's worse, the cops thought he was just another guy that got tired of the daily ground and split. That was the beginning. Am I the one that blew the whistle? No. The next Monday, I searched for George, but he was gone. There was no records that explained what happened to him. It was another security officer that came to me saying he and some lab workers wanted an off-duty meeting at one of the tunnels. Curiosity took over and I said, okay. That night, about nine men showed up. They said they knew they were risking me turning them in, but they wanted to show me some things they thought I should see. One by one, they showed me records that proved many inmates were missing people. There were newspaper clippings and even photos that they somehow smuggled into the base. They hoped to smuggle them back out without me turning them in to the honchos. I could see fear in their faces as they spoke. One man stated he would rather lose his life by trying than lose his soul by not doing anything at all. It was that remark that turned the tide. I told them about George and the things I had found out about him. After a few hours, we pledged to attempt to expose Dulce. Question. The name Nightmare Hall is descriptive, but surely there was a regular name. What was it called in the manuals? In the manuals, it was called the Viverum. It describes Dulce Base as a secured facility for tending bioforms of all types. In their report, it is retold as a private subterranean bioterminal park with accommodations for animals, fish, fowl, reptilian, and mankind. After seeing this park, the name Nightmare Hall is far more accurate than the manual. The accommodations 
for the inmates at Nightmare Hall fall short of the pretty picture the manual paints. Question. You mentioned one reptilian leader, Karshfast. Do you know anything about him, like where he was from? Is he from Earth or another planet? Answer. His name means keeper of the laws. They receive their name after they reach the age of awareness. They don't recognize time as an important factor in being aware, the way humans do. Upon their age of awareness, they are cognitive of the station or position they are destined to fulfill. At that time, they choose or allow someone to choose their name. Their name will include the position they hold and several personnel chosen letters. Each letter has a personal meaning known only to that alien and the one that chose their name. Since Karsh's name means keeper of the laws, his name includes Karsh, memory or keep, base word, and fast, law, base word, fast or bind. Reptilians choose to be not only private, but secretive of the location of their natal place. To them, birth or emergence of life is considered as one of the most sacred rites of life. They consider Earth or Terra their home planet, but several reptoids discuss several star maps. Most of those stars are within the Milky Way. Within those star maps lies the stars and planets of the planets of the Allegiance. Earth being one of those planets, in their trade routes, if any human asked clear questions about the Allegiance, the aliens referred the question to the Draco. The Draco in turn referred the questions to their supervisor, me. I did not have that information about the stars because information was supplied on a need-to-know basis. I didn't need that information. Question. Did any of the working cast join in the revolt? Could you give me some names? Answer. A few of the reptilian janitorial crew let us know that they knew we were attempting to sabotage the work going on on the 6th and 7th levels. One of them, with the name Skahal, secretly formed a small group of reptoids with the same mindset as my group. Skahal took it upon himself, the danger of informing me he was as open as it possible in the unique situation. On the day I found out about it, I was inspecting a camera near the exit tunnel. He approached, stooped down, seemingly scraping some non-existent dirt, and quietly said, a few of us agreed that you are singular in your interest in missing human reports. If true, walk away. I'll reach you. If it's untrue, destroy my life now. My heart almost leapt out of my chest, but I silently walked toward one of the wide halls. For the rest of my life, I'll remember those words. It was the first time I knew reptilians could have individual thoughts and opinions, basically. They formed a uniform front with a small variety of interest, or at least that was what we had thought. It was a couple of days before I heard from him again as he walked beside me in the sixth level infamous hall. I heard him say, enter the exit tunnel on the sixth level north after your shift. The next few hours were long and filled with thoughts of betrayal or worse, but I shouldn't have worried. I contacted one of the original nine men and let them know just in case Gordon wanted to go with me, but I convinced him to wait a few feet from the exit and pretend he was having trouble with his cart. When I got there, there were three of them. Shkal, Shakal, formerly introduced Fasha and Hamsha. Name base word is Sha or assist. With that, I grabbed Gordon quickly from the hall. The five of us walked and talked in the dark tunnels for three hours. After that day, 
The joint resistance group got bigger and bolder. Ultimately, it ended when the military assault was initiated via the exit tunnels, and they executed anybody on their list, human or reptilian. We fought back, but none of the working caste had weapons, nor did the human lab workers. Only the security force and a few computer workers had flash guns. It was a massacre. Everyone was screaming and running for cover. The halls and tunnels were filled as full as possible. We believe it was the Delta Force that chose to hit at shift change, an effort that killed as many as named on their list. We to this day do not know who betrayed us. Gordon Henry ran beside me as we ran into the third level exit tunnels, and when he died, when several bullets slammed into his back, I vaporized that assassin and kept running. And I'm still running. Gordon will be remembered. Question. Tell me more about your flash gun. Is it difficult to operate or is it like a weapon on Star Trek that can stun or kill on different modes? Answer. It is an advanced beam weapon that can operate on three different phases. Phase one, like Star Trek, can stun and maybe kill. If a person has a weak heart on phase two, on phase two it can levitate anything no matter what it weighs. Phase 3 is a serious business mode. It can be used to paralyze anything that lives, animal, human, alien, and plant. On the higher position on that same mode, it can create a temporary death. I can assure you any doctor would certify that person is dead, but their life essence lingers in some strange limbo, some kind of terrible state of non-death. In one to two, one to five hours, that person will revive slowly. First, the body functions will begin. In a few minutes, consciousness followed with full awareness. In that mode, the alien scientists reprogram the human brain and plant false information. When the person awakes, he recalls that false information as information he had gained through life experience. There is no way for a person to learn the truth. The human mind remembers and believes completely the false data. If you attempt to inform them, they would laugh or get angry. They never believe the truth. Their mind always forgets the experience of reprogramming. You ask if the flash gun is difficult to operate. A two-year-old child could use it with one hand. It resembles a flashlight with black glass, conical inverted lens. On the side, there are three recessed knobs in the three curved grooves. Each knob is sized differently. The closer the knob to the hand is less the strength. It is that simple. Each knob has three strengths also with automatic stops at each position. The strongest position will vaporize anything that lives. That mode is so powerful it will leave no trace of what it vaporized. Question. Is the weapon called a flash gun or is there a different name in the manuals? Answer. Everyone calls them flash guns, or more commonly the flash or my flash. When talked about in the manual, it was first introduced as the armor, armor lux weapon. After that, it is explained as a flash gun. Question. What type of security is found at the Dulce base? What else is used against espionage or un unauthorized entry? Answer, I'll mention a few, but it would be nearly impossible to cover it all. The weapon, besides the flash gun most used, is a form of sonic built in with each light fixture, and most camcorders is a device that can render a man unconscious in seconds with nothing more than a silent tone. At Dulce, there is also still VCR cameras, eye print, hand print stations, weight monitors, lasers, ELF and EM equipment, heat sensors, motion detectors, and quite a few other methods. There is no way you could get very far into that base. If you made it to the second level, you would be spotted within 15 feet. More than likely, you would become an inmate and never see the light of the surface world again. If you were lucky, you would be reprogrammed and become one of the countless spies for the ruling caste. Question, according to certain reports, Dulce Base is host to other aliens that live in Level 5. Is that true? Can the humans freely roam or meet one-to-one -one in halls? Or is 
some type of protocol in effect? Answer, there is protocol from the first time you enter the base, and it must be followed every time you see an alien there. From the working caste to the visiting aliens to the ruling caste, there is a never-ending checklist of rules, law, and strict protocol. There's never a chance to roam on the fifth level. The alien housing area is off-limits to any human. The hub is surrounded by security, arsenal, military, and CIA, FBI sections. The area past the security is one of the most secured areas because it houses many classified files. The entry east side of the fifth level is off limits except for security personnel holding Ultra 7, security clearance or higher. The garage on the west side of the fifth level requires Ultra 4 clearance. Question, is there proof available that can confirm the allegations of an underground base or are we just supposed to believe you? Answer, many people have asked that one. No, I don't expect people to believe with blind faith. There is tangible proof that has been seen, felt, or inspected by quite a few folks. I am in no position to go on a lecture circuit to explain to every person on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I'm trying to stay alive. All I can do is state again that Dulce is a secret facility. They work hard to make sure nobody can find that place. If everyone was able, If everyone could easily find it, it wouldn't be a secret facility. I've explained the extreme security methods they use. There is other proof available. There are five sets of copies in five different boxes in five different locations that hold complete proof of everything I have tried to explain. Here is a list of the contents of each box. A. 27 sheets of 8x10 photographs of aliens, creatures, cages, and vats. B. One silent candid video tape begins on a computer bank, shows the vats, multi-shots of Nightmare Hall, two shots of Grays, one shot of the terminal showing sign saying to Los Alamos, and about 30 seconds of shuttle train arriving. C. 25 pages of diagram, chemical formulas, and schematics of alien equipment. D. A copy of the new treaty complete with signatures. E. Two pages of original alien documents signed by Ronald Reagan as governor of California. Each page includes Reagan's signature. The original set mentioned above is sealed in one piece oxygen free heavy plastic box. That set includes 27 sheets of 8x10 with origin and negatives. B. Videotape and the original microfilm from which that videotape was copied. C, 25 original pages of diagrams with notations, formulas, alien equipment, schematics, plus the schematics for the flash gun and my flash gun. D, the treaty with Reagan's signature plus seven other political signatures and four alien signatures. The working flash gun in that box is an extremely dangerous weapon in the wrong hands. There is no limit on the danger it could inflict. That proof must be protected. But when placed in the hands of a certain government agencies, it would not be treated as proof for an alien visitation. That government branch knows the truth, and they publicly lie. Think about it like this. Do you know for certain proof that George Washington lived? Or do you believe what other people have said about him? There is no one alive that saw him with their own eyes. What is claimed about him? You judge all you know about him by what others said. Columbus said there's new land, and it was found. I'm saying there are aliens in several underground bases in this country, and terrible things happen in those places. If I die before it is proven, search for proof. Demand that the government admit it. If enough people demand it, they will find a way to explain the base or at least explain why they must keep it secret. There are many people that work at Dulce Base that know me. I am challenging those co-workers to speak up, at least anonymously, send a letter or a telegram or fax to confirm what, I'm, what I've explained. In the name of brave men, women, children, and aliens that died trying to let the public know what is going on at Dulce facility expose that horrid place before thousands more innocent people are tortured and die unspeakable deaths. Question. 
What about the elevators? Do they drop from the surface to the seventh level in a couple of seconds? Do you know anything about them? Are they electrically lifted? Everywhere on the surface world, there are elevators made by Otis Elevator Company. Does that company make the elevators at Dulce? Answer. I failed to notice what brand was available in the elevators at the base. I could tell you that there is no elevator anywhere at Dulce that drops from the surface to the seventh level. The security blueprints show the levels are stepped down. Each level drops one floor only. Not even the hub has a express elevator. After the third level, not only would you change elevators, you are weighed and color-coded before you re-enter the car. All elevators are magnetically controlled, even lights in the elevators, as well as all lights on the levels are magnetically induced. The light bulbs are not the type bought on the surface, but a totally different type of light system. The illumination found there is closer matched to the natural sunlight than any artificial light on the surface world. The shape of the elevators is unique. If you have seen a Tupperware sugar bowl, you could see the shape copied in the elevator, sort of like an open-ended oval with another half oval on each side. That elevator shaft matches the shape perfectly. The magnetic controls are in the half oval shape. If you could stand in or close to the half ovals, you would feel the slight pull of the power of those magnets. The motion is smooth and silent. There is a nearly unnoticed surge when the motion starts or stops. There is no cables needed because the lift is magnetic, not electric. Since there are no cables in the elevator cars, there is no chance of them falling. Question. I understand that certain groups of cleared individuals in the government are collaborating with alien groups. Is it known how many groups and what type they are working with? Answer. I don't know how many groups or what type they are working with. Question. A mysterious security man calling himself Agent Yellowfruit says he worked at Groom Lake, or Area 51. The security officer states he's been in contact with benevolent aliens at Groom Lake facility. Are you aware of such group? Answer. Yellowfruit is one of the slang names for yellow jacket or yellow flag that shows quarantine and caution in the labs. There are so many different slang names at Dulce Labs that meant quarantine that the workers published a booklet to show the meanings at Dulce Yellow Fruit are the lab workers so called for the yellow light outside of the decontamination chamber. Banana is the older workers, lemon are the new guys, so on. Question Is there an alien installation under Groom Lake or Papos Lake at the Nevada test site, and are they conducting biological research at these sites? Answer, most of that stuff at Groom facility deals with defense, but there is a large storage area in the tunnels that holds thousands of alien crafts. From what I've heard, the medical tests at Nevada test site are conducted by and for the Navy. Question, according to my sources, the aerospace companies have a secret underground installation in the Tachapi Mountains, not far from Rosamond near Edwards Air Force Base. Insiders refer to the Tachapi install installment as Ant Hill. They're experimenting with advanced technology such as anti-gravity disks. Some have seen basketball-sized floating orbs patrol the facility. Do you have any further information on this? Answer. The California mountains, Tachapi, Chocolate, and Shasta, etc. all have alien security methods and equipment. The basketball-sized orbs are used for unmanned patrol. They are silent, but when photographing living beings, they make a humming sound. The glow that emits light is magnetic aura. This light is in the visible spectrum 3,900 angstroms. You can see the light, but the light does not reflect off anything. Question. Is there anything you can tell me about the moon insta 
alien installations, atmosphere, United States bases? Answer, there is not much I can tell you. I wasn't in the lunar program. I heard there was a lot of equipment sent to the moon between 59 and 64 under Project Whiteout. Question, how do the aliens use magnetism? Do they use it as an energy source? Is there more we need to know about magnetism? Answer, the aliens use magnite, magnets for everything. They use magnets as a basic structure for their energy source. The more you learn about magnetics, the better. The human race calls them magnets. The aliens call them lodestar. They have been harvesting lodestars for centuries. Not only that, they want all the magnetic power on Earth. They intend to continue harvesting that power now and in the future. As long as we are only using magnetic power as an oddity, there is no problem. But in recent times, the human race has begun using magnetic power and finding more ways to utilize that commodity. There was a treaty made. In the original treaty, the human race, or those who supposedly represented the human race, if you could call them that. Didn't mind at all. We consider magnets as hardly more than useless. As people searched for another source of power, we turned to magnets. The aliens wanted a new treaty. What could we offer? They chose land, underground mining rights, animals, and humans for new experiments. The general public never knew about the treaty. The governmental, the Bavarian cultist heads of the world, chose another treaty in 1933. This time, we got high-tech knowledge in exchange. So now, the more we use magnetics, the more they claim humans. The lands in the United States of America, we were sold in exchange for magne magnets. If you doubt it, look around. There are token companies that really utilize magnetic power but are depending on electric-based or ceramic magnets, not lodestar, magnetic oxide, or iron-based magnets. Question, what do aliens do with the cow blood and other parts of the mutil mutilated animals? Do they need these fluids for research or survival? Answer, the aliens use the blood and body parts for formula to keep them alive, their food, and for use in growing vats and for artificial wombs, plasma and amniotic fluid are the two most vital ingredients for their lives. Also, the sap of some plants can keep them alive for months. Most of the plants are parasitic in nature, but red grapes and the orca plant can also be added to the formula to keep them alive if they have no regular formula. Question. Female abductees report being inseminated by aliens. Are they trying to hybridize our species? Answer. Yes. They are breeding slave warriors for an upcoming war with the alien race. The serpentine races in the orbit around Earth, Venus, and Mars. Abductees have reported that aliens can pass their bodies and that of the abductee through window glass. Is that a feat of magic achieved by advanced technology or psychic power? Answer. The aliens have mastered atomic matter. They can go through walls like we go through water. It's not magic, it's physics. We can learn to do the same thing. It has to do with controlling atoms at will. Question. Are you in communication with benevolent aliens, or do you have contacts that are? If you are, can you tell us how we can communicate with their teams? Answer, I am not at liberty to discuss communications with any friendly alien life forms. I can tell you there is a friendly factor active in Costa Rica. I am in direct communication with that factor. I am. An active member of the Subgalactic League of Costa Rica, this organization, using a small satellite dish, a television set, and ham radio equipment, reached this factor. 
I might suggest that by using similar equipment and a low band frequency, you may reach that same factor. Question, do you stay in the United States or do you live abroad? Do you work now? I know you have been on the run for several years. Answer, yeah, quite a few years I visit the United States, but it's really dangerous when I do. I lived in several countries. I spent a few years in Mexico working as a Merc soldier. It's rough work, frequently living in the bush, eating whatever I can find. I spent time in South America fighting the drug cartel. I settled in Costa Rica, bought a small house in Lyman. Actually, it's a shanty that someone abandoned. I paid the equivalency of $11 to one of the local constables for the right to call it mine. My name changes when I think someone asks questions. I've worked in one of the underground bases near Panama border. It's in the mountains, not very far from a passive but active volcano. It's not fancy like Dulce, but the people are wonderful. Question. What is the best city in Costa Rica for an American to visit and maybe move to live? Answer. None of them are worth anything by comparison, but I like Lyman. There is a real culture shock when you get past the tourist sections inside the urban areas. It's not so bad, but away from the beaten path and picture changes. There are no improvements in the shanties, no sewers, plumbing, or paved roads. But if you stay in the cities and you don't find and you don't mind, excuse me, the big difference in cultures, the countries have a lot to offer. Nice weather, great beaches, and beautiful trees with fruit growing everywhere. Question Are there any other security level names other than Secret Top Secret Ultra? Answer there are many other security clearances. Here are a few. Umbra Stellar G2-7Z Triad UMT Universal Military Training and UMS Universal Military Service Astral and Subastral Umbra is higher than Ultra. Question. Ever see a badge with M-A-J-I? Answer, no. Question. Since you've lived in Spanish-speaking countries, it's obvious that you are bilingual. What other languages do you speak? Answer. Other than English, the only other languages I speak are Spanish and Ushu, the common language alien spoken at Dulce. I speak Spanish fluently and enough Ushu to keep myself out of trouble. Shortly after I transferred to Dulce, I took a crash course on Ushu. Anyone that plans to spend more than one week working at that base, they are wise to learn the basics. Otherwise, you are required to wait for an escort to get around. All the signs that are on the base are written universally recognized symbol language. Ushu is logical and easy to learn. Question. What are the eating habits of aliens? Are they carnivores? Answer. That depends whether they are one of the gray work caste, one of the reptilian worker caste, or one with a higher developed draconian leader. Also, the created beings, replicants, type 2 being, and one of the really strange genetic mixtures. I'll try and cover a little of each. The formula includes anatomic water, plasma, and several other body parts, raw, usually bovine, This nearly clear mixture is a texture of pureed peaches it's and almost in that color. The grays make the attempt not to eat around humans because the odor of it is very unpleasant to any human. They can spend days or even weeks between feedings. The working cast of the reptilians eat meat, insects, and a large variety of plants including vegetables and fruit. They prefer their meat raw and very fresh, but have learned to enjoy some cooked meat like raw beef steak. Unlike the greys, they eat frequently and usually carry or send for food on their breaks. The ruling caste is secretive about their foods. They have created several dietary myths that they carefully embellish when the chance arrives. 
One of their favorite legends involves one of their ancestral ability to eat an entire flock of geese in one sitting. They rarely eat in sight of other species. They carefully choose their food, then carry their meal to their quarters. It was only when dignitaries arrive at the base did they join their meals. They enjoy the same foods we do, and they have been seen secretly munching on fresh-found snail. The human-looking replicants eat some cooked vegetables. They rely on vitamins and liquid protein for substance. If they have to eat on the surface world, they can eat whatever they are served, but as soon as possible, they regurgitate. Their digestive system frequently fail to process the food properly. The engineered beings have a special diet created for their dietary needs. The mixture includes several organ foods blended with plasma, plasmatic liquids, anatomic liquid, and parasite plasm materials. This unique animals also enjoy occasionally green plants, usually grasses or lettuce the creature that are designed to become warriors eat protein filled liquids question in the dulce papers copper seems to be high on the importance list in what methods is copper used answer on the main use of copper at dulce is containment of the magnetic flow magnets are used everywhere at the base the infamous vat interiors are lined with copper, and the exterior walls are clad with stainless steel. The mechanical arm that stirs the liquid is made of a copper alloy. Other uses include dietary needs in a few of the transbiotic beings. There are several specially made cells or rooms built first with lead, then magnetic steel, then clad in copper. It is in those cells on the fourth level that contain living aureal essence. This essence is what you would call a soul or astral body. Question. Growing multiple species beings, blood formulas, and human parts in vats sounds like a bad plot in a science fiction movie. The doctors and scientists of the world claim you can't mix the species. The concepts mentioned in the Dulce paper sound far-fetched. Could you provide information that the average surface world reader could understand about similar things? Answer, the doctors and scientists on the surface world may say that, but underground, away from prying eyes of ethics boards, they do grow transgenous beings. There is a lot of written material available at libraries. One of the best sources is an easy-to-read book published back in 1969 by Prentice Hall International with the title of The Second Genesis, The Coming Control of Life by Albert Rosenfeld. In this book, they discuss animals that may be especially bred to supply genetically reliable organs for people, and the use of fetal and embryonic material from which an adult-sized organs and tissues may be grown. Also, he discussed the fact that embryonic tissue has no immunological activity. Therefore, it cannot provoke the defense mechanism in a recipient. It will join the body not as a foreign agent, but as a natural protein. He further discusses solitary generation, commonly called virgin birth, but also known as parthen, parthenogenesis, with one virgin birth and 1.6 million births average on the surface of the world. And do say that rate is reversed. Occasionally, a normal birth human infant is born in the hospital wards on the seventh level. Prothnogenesis is a method used to grow type 2 beings. The now common transsexual surgery on the surface world began at Dulce Base. Men become women on a whim in the seventh level labs and with the fourth level technology the brainwashing, the eager desire to become a woman, and that poor man, 
firmly believes he always wanted to be a woman. No one could convince him to believe the truth. All things are twisted at Dulce. A quote by Dr. Ralph W. Gerard in the second Genesis put in his now classic statement, There can be no twisted thought without a twisted molecule. Most have originated at Dulce. Question. How are the human workers stopped from telling everything about Dulce? Answer. Implants, fear threats to harm the families, EM control, also reprogramming with ELF, extreme low frequency, and drugs are the most common methods to encourage the workers not to divulge the location or daily routine. Question. A construction worker at Ant Hill, the Northrop's Tachapi base, Report seeing 10 to 12 foot tall human looking beings in lab coats. Who are these guys? Are they from the hollow earth? Answer, they are probably inner earth drones. The deeper you get, the stranger the life forms. The tall men are from the subterranean levels. Lower yet are the dwarfed deformed forms. I don't trust either. There are other forms that both the tall men and dwarf men fear and loathe. They are similar to Bigfoot in appearance, but extremely violent and enjoy eating whatever they find while it's alive. They are subterranean and demented, with an IQ of around 15. The reptoid life forms stay in the caves or caverns that aren't very deep. They prefer desert mountains. They use camouflage rather than fighting. But they do carry viral rods for protection, flash guns. They do have a symbol, not the hokey snake with wings that I keep seeing in the public. The reptoids use a dragon with its tail and its mouth with seven pointed stars in the middle. Question, there have been reports of Delta Force having black vans with no tires that hover over the ground. How much are we, the USA, already interworking with alien cultures? I haven't seen any black vans you mentioned. We are totally submerged with alien cultures. Very little of the original human culture has survived. Question. How can we, the public, go after or expose an alien culture which is covert and hidden? Answer. Go for the best shot. That means go for the reptoid. They stay near the surface. They choose to try to hide or avoid contact. They are soldiers doing a job, and usually there are two or three at each job site. They are manning the remote post. They are not to bother any humans unless they are endangered the post. endangering the post. Most of them are not hostile and won't kidnap you. They may blast you with their stun gun and may paralyze you. You won't remember the flash for an hour or two and cause confusion and mild fear. It could cause you to black out for a while. It is their way to escape and buy time to hide any visible equipment. If you know any areas with repeated reptilian sightings, then that is a place for you to look. They are fearsome to meet face to face and their voices are harsh and whispery with heavy S's. But most of them understand English and several other languages where something with a reptile, not something violent like St. George killing a dragon, in sight. If you see one, keep your hands open, palms forward, arms down. That is a non-aggressive approach. Don't raise your arms unless told to. Don't carry anything in your hands or arms. If he doesn't run, walk slowly toward him. Let him speak first. They consider humans repulsive and hostile and threatening, with good reason. Don't try to offer him anything. Don't touch him or anything of his. If he hisses at you, back up a couple of feet, but don't look away. It simply means he finds you smelly. Don't try to overpower him. He is stronger than 10 to 12 men. Usually, if he hasn't run so far, he is curious and wants to talk. Fight your fear and your thoughts of panic. Question, how do we get closer to some kind of data to prove to others that there really is a danger of non-human beings? 
Answer, good question. I'm afraid we will find the proof the hard way when we are invaded. Try to keep a small camera with you at all times when you search for reptoids. Keep it in your pocket. Question, is there a specific location where the public can set up cameras and equipment to document any alien government base and or their activities? Answer, problem is, most of the meetings are held in military bases or underground. Groom Lake facility doesn't fly sev- does fly several alien craft there regularly. They fly over unpopulated land and go back forth to several bases. Southern California has several notable areas. 29 Palms, Lancaster, Chocolate Mountains are well known for such activities. Question, could you provide us with a copy of your badge or card that you use at Dulce? Answer, badges and cards are... Badges or cards never leave the base. All exits have bars or walls of metal. To open, to go out, requires using your card. When you use it for an exit slot, the card won't come back out. Each time you leave the base, you are issued a new card. With all the usual data about you, plus your weight added correctly daily. There are several mines in Chocolate Mountains that open into a base highway, but be aware that they are patrolled regularly and have cameras there. Question. There are so many types of really far out aliens seen in TVs, movies, magazines, popular fiction. Is there one type of fictional unknown race in your opinion that fits the term alien? Answer. Yes, there are two. An alien that is totally undescribable and another would be a pseudo alien question what are the dimensions of the dulce facility answer there are 1700 paved miles of roads under dulce and northern new mexico towards los alamos is another 800 miles of tunnels the base is still growing due west question what is the top depth Answer. The first level starts 200 feet from the surface. Each level has a ceiling of 7 feet, except levels 6 and 7. The ceiling there is 45 to 60 feet. There are approximately 45 feet or more between each level. The average highway ceiling is 25 feet. The hub at the base is 3,000 feet wide. Use a 7.5 minute scale map to try to comprehend the size of the place. Question, are there regular vehicle exits that can be observed from the ground? Answer, yes, but they are inside Los Alamos. Question, are there aerial exits that can be observed? Answer, 20 miles due north of Dulce is a large hangar. It is hidden by the facade of cliff. Look for an isolated short road on the top of the mesa with no road to or from the top. Question. Are ventilation shafts visible? Answer. Ventilation shafts are hidden by brush or vents inside caves. There are five on the top of the mesa. Be aware there are cameras inside most of the vents. Question. Is there external security, and could we recognize them in or around the town itself? Answer, there is minimal security on the surface. Most of the men and women are Air Force or Highway crewmen. There used to be the Best Western Motel that hosts or hires a lot of the base workers from Level 1. I don't know if the motel is still operational. Most of the security force live in Santa Fe. Others live at White Pine in Los Alamos. Question. Are there security sensors? What type? If so, what is the power source? Answer. Yes, there are many types of sensors. Radar, infrared, heat sensor, microwave, EMGW, and satellite. Most of the sensors are powered by magnetic power. The only thing you may notice on the surface would be the occasional satellite dish. Question. If you can, give us some information on an upcoming war with the aliens. When does it start? Do you recommend going underground? Answer. The war has already begun to start. They use weather control devices that can cripple a city in hours, storms, flood, drought. 
With those few things, they can bring any country to their knees in a hurry. Yeah, I do recommend going underground. Choose a location that has a higher elevation than the surrounding terrain. Pick out a cave or even an abandoned mine shaft or two. Bury a cache of supplies, including food and water, near these locations. Place the supplies in a heavy plastic bag box that have tight lids to prevent the destruction by the earth burrowing rodents and insects. Then plan to live like a squatter when it becomes necessary. If you own land, create a system of tunnels and tell no one. Use your tunnels to secret your supplies and plan to live in those corridors when you must question. What about the reptilian ships? that are in orbit around the equator. Are they cloaked? They are not cloaked the way you may think. It's more like nobody is learning to see, even though they are in plain sight. Like a mailman becomes invisible because you are so used to seeing them, you never notice he's alive. One of the favorite methods of covert activities is to hide their operation in such an obvious way that no one would suspect it was covert. Questions. What are greys susceptible to? Answer. Greys are photosensitive. Any bright lights hurts their eyes. They avoid sunlight, travel at night. Camera flashes cause them to back up. They could be used as a weapon against them, but they recover quickly. It could buy enough time to escape, use commands or nonsensical words in a form of commands, and they will back up. Their brain is more logical than ours, and they do not create fun. They do not understand poetry either. What really confuses them is saying things in Pig Latin. We learned that in a hurry and used it against them in the Dulce Wars. Question. Can greys read your intentions if you come up behind one? Answer. Yeah, they can read your intent because they use your body's frequency. The human race broadcasts a frequency that they can recognize as an electromagnetic impulse. Each person has a slightly different frequency. That difference is what we call personality. When a human thinks they broadcast strong impulses, in the case of fear, that frequency is loud and easy to recognize. Question. Can we shield ourselves against their mental control? Answer. We can shield ourselves against them. However, 95% of the human race never try to control their thoughts, and controlling our own thoughts is the best weapon. The average person rarely thinks in a clear pattern. That allows the brain to think in a chaotic way. Control your thoughts, and you can stop the aliens attempting to abduct and control you. Controlling my own thoughts have kept me alive for years. Question. Could you shed some light on the type of human the aliens are looking for when they abduct? Answer. I can tell you that they most commonly are petite women in their early 20s to 30s, dark-haired boys between 5 and 9, small to medium-sized men in their mid-20s to early 40s. But let me stress that there are all types of people being held against their will in the Dulce base. There are Tall, heavy men and women, teenagers, elderly folks, and very young girls in cages and in vats. I only mention the most common age are small young men and petite women. The boys are favored because at their age their bodies are rapidly growing and their atomic material is adaptable in transfer chamber. The young, small women are frequently very fertile. The men are used for sperm. I have no idea why they prefer small to average sized men. Question. Did you ever see twins or triplets? Answer. Since you mentioned it, no. It never crossed my mind to search for them, but then that doesn't mean they're not there. There is no way I could have seen everybody in that huge complex. Question. What is the prevalent human race at the Dulce base? I am curious about both the human workers and inmates. Answer. The human workforce is made of people from every nation on the surface of the world. The one thing they share is that they all speak English. If you are asking if they are white, black, red, yellow, brown, again, I have to say there is no prevalent race there. As for inmates, I could see all races. From what I could see, it looked like there were more white people. But again, 
I saw a constant flow of different people. Many, I think, were only there for a few hours. Question. Please explain the method they use to identify each inmate. Answer. No one has a name. When first brought to the facility, they were issued a one large number. Usually that code is a mixture of numbers and letters. They show the place, how, and by who. Followed by the time, age, sex, and finally a personal number. Maybe their social security number. For example, it may look like this. NVLV hyphen zero zero a hyphen zero zero seven zero zero hyphen p zero zero dot dot zero zero dot dot zero zero hyphen zero zero hyphen m hyphen zero 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 hyphen zero zero hyphen zero zero question with that large facility trash and garbage must be a really prob really big problem how do they dispose of it answer it's never a problem some of it is reformed or melted down then remade some of the wet garbage is eaten by bacterial forms, and what is left is vaporized in a vat-like chamber. The residue of the action is used in a complex lye and is used to fertilize crops. Question. Where is your family, not just your wife and son, but parents and siblings? Answer. Kathy and Eric are still missing. My parents died in a car crash when I was in my teens. I have one brother. If he is alive, I suspect he is inside an underground base somewhere. I haven't heard from him in several years. Please pray for them, please. Question. What is your birth date and where are you from? April 23, 1941. Glen Ellen, Illinois. Actually in a farm at home in the place now called Glen Ellen. My birth certificate lists it as Wheaton, Illinois. Question. You have been through so much and yet keep fighting. What is your biggest fear? Answer. That the general public will forget the trapped innocent people in the despicable place and will ignore the hundreds of children, women, and men added to that place every month. And that, my friends, is, I believe, the last public interview that Thomas Edwin Costello ever made. <laughs> it is crazy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. Let's learn something from this. One thing that I... One thing that's crazy is... If you think about when they were talking about the Bigfoot-like creatures in the beginning and almost like mid-ending. So when they were talking about like these tall humanoid and then the dwarfed deformed ones. And then the humanoid bipedal hairy like Bigfoot creatures that are very destructive and eat their prey alive. Could that be Dogman? Could that be Bigfoot? Could that be werewolves? Could it be? What could it be? I know it's scary. I know that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. And please, everyone, stay safe. Don't end up in a dumb. And don't end up cryptid food. Thank you so much for all of your support. Your support is what makes this channel so special and what continues to help it grow and go. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant. We know these creatures are real. We know they are out there. The only thing we can do is really honestly keep an eye on the ones that we love, share the information with them. Even if they laugh, at least they have it. At least they have a little piece of something that may save their life someday. God bless you all.